357 Magnum is the first Magnum revolver cartridge. It was introduced in 1935 and it was introduced by Smith & Wesson in their big end frame 357 Magnum. It followed on the heels of the uh, pre-war uh, 3844 heavy duty and 3844 outdoorsman which was a 38 revolver built on a 44 in size frame they were very strong and they made people realize that that you could go to the next level in uh, handgun stopping power and it changed the revolver world at to this day uh, there are a lot of people who really favor the large bores 44s 45s and i'm one of them but people forget that the 357 is a very effective cartridge for hunting and also for self-defense. Uh, the statistics bear out that the 357 Magnum is probably the best handgun man stopper that we have. If you go through the uh, FBI statistics and stuff that uh, scientists like Evan Marshall have come up with for the last 40, 50 years, the uh, 357 Magnum is just a wonderful defense cartridge, and it's a cartridge that shooters today should feel well armed if they have one. The 357 is just a great round, and it also aids in the 357's versatility that it will also shoot 38 special. I shoot a lot of 38s in my 357s uh, just for practice or just for fun or plinking or whatever. In 1950, Smith & Wesson upped the ante for concealability by introducing the Chief Special in 38 special. and. Uh, it's it proved you know it's proven to be one of the most popular defensive revolvers ever manufactured. Later on, the as the metallurgy improved and things like that, they got to where they could put 357 in the J frame. And uh, today we've got a, a neat little revolver from Taurus that continues that tradition. This is their model 605 Defender, 357 Magnum, five shot. And it's, it's built on a small frame, the same size as the J frame, so holsters for the J frame will work. But this model here has some significant improvements to the regular J frame size five shot revolvers. First of all, the barrel on this is three inches instead of two inches. Doesn't sound like much, but you know an inch is a good thing to have, uh, especially when it comes to burning up that all that powder that's in a 357 Magnum. The extra inch really helps you ballistically in the 357 Magnum. You don't lose as much velocity. You also gain sight radius, and the extra inch of barrel really doesn't do anything to you as far as concealing the gun on your person. There's no reason for it to not be a three inch revolver, especially in a 357. I can see maybe in a 38, you'd want to carry around a two inch snubby, but the extra inch of barrel really does you some good in the 357. And this little Tar 605 Defender has a three inch barrel on it. It's, it's fully underlugged and it's got a full rib on top of it. Another thing the three inch barrel does for you is it allows you to have a little bit longer ejector rod stroke, which works very nicely if you want to get your empties out of there in a hurry. This thing gives you a full ejector stroke instead of the little uh, short stroke you get on a two inch. The 605 is a five shot 357 revolver. It's all stainless steel and it's uh, very well made. It's, it's tight. There's not a whole lot of cylinder player in shake or anything like that to it. But it's all stainless steel with a nice matte finish. It's uh, the grips on it are a really nice improvement to the earlier versions. This is a Hogue uh, soft rubber grip with finger grooves. It's, it's big enough for you to put all three of your support fingers on it and it's uh it tapers down towards the bottom as it's a round butt frame the uh, grip frame is left exposed at the end which makes it settle back a little bit further in your hand something like that i'm one of them also the uh there's a very nice palm swell shape to it fits the hand really really well it's just a very nicely designed grip got just a little bit of give to it and even when you're shooting really hot three to seven magnum loads these hogs really do a great job of helping you accomplish what should be the only kind of gun control that should be in discussion in today's world even though this thing is made from all stainless steel, it's not an alloy framed revolver or anything like that. Still, the weight of it comes in, thanks to the little small size of it, the weight comes in at only about a pound and a half, so it makes it really easy to tote around. Uh, you can carry this thing all day and not know it's there in a proper rig. The five shot cylinder locks up very nicely at the front and the rear of the cylinder. Instead of having just the rear latch that we're all familiar with, the front latch has a little ball detent in the, in the crane that uh, snaps into a little divot 
underneath the barrel there and it that makes it lock up very tightly at the front and the back the hammer the trigger and the cylinder release latch are polished stainless steel on this which makes a very nice pleasing aesthetic contrast to the uh, matte finish stainless steel of the rest of this little old revolver it just makes a very nice looking little gun the hammer is deeply checkered very nicely checkered it's got a wide spur on it it's very easy to pull back if you want to shoot it in single action mode which by the way this is a single action or double action it also features the transfer bar safety which has been very familiar over the last 50 years or so and another thing that i thought was neat on this is there is no taurus internal key lock safety on this the 605 comes with a cable lock if you want to use that that's great go ahead have at it but there's not a key lock or anything that you need to unlock or lock this thing or that could possibly fail just when you don't need it to i like that i, I prefer them not to have a lock on them this one does not the trigger is wide and smooth faced so that if you're working at double action the trigger slides very easily in your hand the double action trigger pull is smooth there is no grit to it there's no creep to it it's it's a a nice trigger it's not really lightweight it's uh the double action pull is 10 pounds two ounces which is not it's not a really i wouldn't call that a light trigger pull but i wouldn't call it an excessively heavy trigger pull either especially given how smooth it is it seems lighter than it actually is the single action pull is very nice it releases at three pounds three ounces and it also lets off very crisply and very cleanly it's a very nicely designed trigger and it's easy to use makes this thing easy to shoot with a good degree of accuracy the sights on the 605 are very nice and they contribute quite a bit to the practical accuracy and the value of the 605 the rear sight is just a fixed rear sight we're all familiar with it it's a pinch groove in the top of the frame but it's it's uh, got a nice little dished out area in the back it really crispens up that rear sight that works just fine but the front side is where this thing really shines the uh, rather than just have a, a, a little blade milled into the top of the barrel or something like that this is a pinned in sight so it's easy to replace if you ever decide you want to but i don't know why you would this is a night sight it glows at in the dark and it's a uh, made by ameriglow it has an orange painted face with a tritium vial in the middle of it so it pops out really nicely for you in the daytime and also at night time that uh, dot is going to glow for you it makes it really easy to pick up that all important front sight in either dim light or bright light conditions it makes for a very nice sight picture a whole lot easier to shoot this thing accurately the MSRP on the Taurus 605 Defender is $472.63, and that is quite a bargain for what you get on this, especially when you factor in getting in the night sights, getting the extra length of barrel, and getting the whole grips on it. The, uh, it if the whole thing makes for a very nice cost-effective package, an easy gun to tote around, an easy thing to have on you when you need to have some defense on you. If, you know, we all would rather have a 45. Heck, I'd rather have a shotgun on me, uh, but you just can't do that. Uh, any kind of carry situation is a compromise between what you can hide and what is effective this is a very good solution for that the 357 or even in some 38 loads this make a great defense gun it's cost effective it's a fine little old five gun from the folks at taurus check them out at taurususa.com you can buy one of these online using the gun genie at galleryofguns.com you tell them where you are and they'll have dealers in your area contact you with competitive bids on this so it'll go through your local dealer you're not actually buying it through the mail or anything no matter what some of the liberals may say you're buying this through your local dealer and all the laws apply if you want to find a dealer in your area then go to lipsy's website lipsy's.com click on the dealer finder and again you give them your zip code and they tell you where there's uh, dealers close to your zip code that can fix you up with one of these either way you're not cutting out your local dealer and you're following all the laws everything's kosher it's just a good deal for everybody one of the cool things about the 357 magnum in general is that the revolvers made to shoot 357 magnum will also work with 38 special 38 specials is a is a great cartridge of some of my favorites you can get good man stopping loads for them 
uh, good self-defense loads for them and you can also get like good sedate practice ammo for them that's what i'm working with right here is the mag tech 158 grain lead round nose bullet it's a swage lead soft bullet it's moving out at a pretty sedate velocity and so they're easy to shoot they're a good practice round the bullet construction is not what i would pick for a self-defense load was just a lead round nose bullet not moving that fast not going to do a whole lot of tissue damage but it's a really good practice load i buy these by the case from the folks at luckygunner.com lucky gunner is a great outfit you get on there you look see what you want if they show it on their website it's in stock you don't have to worry about that you can get good deals and you know what they got Moving up a little bit in power, we have the 38 Special Plus P 158 grain hard cast Keith style semi wad cutter bullet from the folks at Double Tap Ammo. Double Tap makes some great stuff. These, these are moving out of a four inch barrel chronographed at right out a thousand feet per second. So they'll be, be doing probably about 925, 950 out of this three inch barrel. A couple hundred feet per second faster than the same bullet weight in the 38 Special Standard load. Stepping up all the way to 357 Magnum performance in this little Taurus is uh, Double Taps 158 grain controlled expansion jacketed hollow point 357 Magnum load. It's a full stout 357 load doing 1400 feet per second out of a four inch barrel. So it's a full 400 feet per second faster than the 38 Special Plus P in the similar bullet weight and 600 feet per second faster than the standard velocity 38 special it's a really stout load but it's easy to control thanks in large part to these very well shaped soft rubber hold grips that are on this Taurus There are many ways to carry the Model 605 Taurus concealed um, and any holster that fits a Smith & Wesson J-frame and there are so many designs out there for that will fit the little Taurus. It's the same frame size as the little Smith. A lot of the J-frame holsters you're going to find are made for a 2-inch barrel so the 3-inch barrel on the 605 might stick out a little bit from the bottom. That don't make any difference in the world to me. An excellent concealment holster for the small frame revolvers, whether it be from Smith or Charter or Taurus or whatever, is the Silver Dollar Pancake from my pal Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters in Prescott, Arizona. These are wonderfully designed. They're really what Rob made his bones on was the pancake holsters. This is a smaller version of it made for the smaller revolvers. I've got it snapped onto one of Rob's chesty puller conversion systems which makes any pretty much any pancake holster into a shoulder or chest holster. The silver dollar pancake worn on the belt can be worn several different ways. It can be worn strong side, it can be worn cross straw, it can be worn with a forward can or straight up and down. Also, you can get these that have in, what Rob calls inside out straps, which are little straps that come around the outside. You can snap those to your belt and use this as an inside the waistband holster. This is a very versatile system for not much money. This one here has a very nice basket weave stamp on it. You can get them carved, you can get them plain, you can get them from exotic leathers. You can get any number of options on these and they're very versatile, very well made, very rugged and very cost effective system from Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters. Another good solution is a pocket holster. I pocket carry J frames a lot and I've had this holster around just for that purpose. This is also from Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters. This is his pocket protector and similarly to the shoulder rig the end of the gun sticks out just a little bit from the bottom of it again that's no problem these are really nice in that they stay in the pocket when you go to draw the gun out of the pocket it, it's, it's swayed out so that helps you grab the fabric of the pocket a little bit the slick side of the leather is on the inside which helps you in the draw and the reholster there's also a little sharp tip here on it that grabs onto the edge of your pocket when you go to pull it out and it uh, 
ensures that you're not drawing the gun on the holster because if you do that then then uh, if you draw the gun the holster and everything and you come out here uh oh i gotta pluck the holster off of it and you might die before you get that done so rob's holster design really works well for that another cool thing about this one since he's got this little extra bit of space he puts a little slot right here you can stick a couple extra rounds in there to top off your reload if you need to do that if you're not carrying speed strips or speed loader or anything like that you've got space for a couple of more rounds right here on the holster it's a nice idea from my good buddy rob Leahy at simply rugged holsters Help.